This is a recorded presentation summarizing Atlantic Striped Bass Draft Addendum 1 to Amendment 7 for public comment regarding commercial quota transfers in the ocean region. My name is Emily Franca, and I am the Fishery Management Plan Coordinator for Striped Bass at the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission. I'll start the presentation with a brief overview of the commission and then cover Draft Addendum 1. I'll review the statement of the problem, timeline, background, and proposed management options for the draft addendum. The presentation will conclude with how to provide public comment. Draft Addendum 1 is posted online on the ASMFC public input webpage at the link shown on the screen. Starting with background on ASMFC, ASMFC was formed in 1942 as an interstate compact between the 15 Atlantic Coast states from Maine through Florida. The Commission is a deliberative forum for those states coordinating management for species in state waters, which is zero to three miles from shore. And while each state is represented on the Commission by three commissioners, each state gets one vote in the decision making process. The Commission's Atlantic Striped Bass Management Board specifically includes the states from Maine through North Carolina and also includes the District of Columbia and the Potomac River Fisheries Commission as well as the National Marine Fisheries Service and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So moving into draft addendum one. Starting with the statement of the problem here, there have been questions and concerns about the striped bass commercial quota system with particular concern regarding the use of the 1970s reference period as the basis for commercial quotas. And these questions and concerns were included in the scoping document for draft amendment seven in 2021, but the issue of addressing commercial quotas was not selected for further development in draft amendment seven at the time. And some board members expressed support for addressing the commercial quota issue separately from amendment seven at another time. In August, 2021, the board initiated this draft addendum to consider allowing for the voluntary transfer of striped bass commercial quota in the ocean region. And this action was initiated in order to consider a management option that could provide some more immediate relief to states that are seeking a change to their commercial quota. Other commission managed species do allow for the voluntary transfer of quota between states and quota transfers can address issues like shifting stocks, quota overages, um, and other issues. So here's the current timeline for draft addendum one. After the board initiated the draft addendum in August, 2021, the plan development team developed the draft addendum document. Consideration of the addendum was then postponed until August, 2022. And at that time, the board provided additional guidance in August, 2022, and the plan development team revised the draft addendum accordingly. The board then approved the revised draft addendum for public comment in November, 2022. And we are currently in the public comment period, which is open through January 13th, 2023. And then at the February, 2023 board meeting next year, the board will consider selecting final measures and final approval of addendum one. So moving on to the background information for the draft addendum, starting with the status of the stock. The recent 2022 stock assessment update for striped bass indicates the stock is overfished, but no longer experiencing overfishing relative to the updated reference points for female spawning stock biomass and fishing mortality. The 2022 assessment also indicated that under the current fishing mortality rate, there is a 78.6% chance the stock will rebuild by 2029, which is the rebuilding deadline. For commercial fishery management specifically, the fishery management plan uses a quota system to manage striped bass commercial fisheries. So for the ocean, the plan establishes state-by-state -state commercial quotas. For the Chesapeake Bay, the plan establishes a total bay-wide commercial quota which is then allocated per the mutual agreement of the Chesapeake Bay jurisdictions. And for all quotas, any quota overages are paid back the following year on a pound for pound basis. The rollover of unused quota from one year to the next is not permitted. 
And currently, quota transfers between states are not permitted. The focus of this draft addendum is considering quota transfers in the ocean region. So the remaining slides will provide details on the ocean commercial fishery specifically. This table shows the current Amendment 7 state-by-state -state commercial quotas for the ocean region, incorporating approved conservation equivalency programs. So the total ocean quota across all states is about 2.4 million pounds. And the states marked with asterisks here in the table are states that prohibit the commercial harvest of striped bass, which are Maine, New Hampshire, Connecticut, and New Jersey. And note that New Jersey reallocates their commercial quota to a recreational bonus program. For the most recent fishing year in 2021, total striped bass removals across both the commercial and recreational sectors was 5.1 million fish. About 12% of that total was commercial harvest. 2% of that total was commercial dead discards. 36% was recreational harvest. And about 50% was recreational release mortality. For commercial landing specifically, the ocean commercial fisheries landed 1.8 million pounds in 2021 out of the 2.4 million pound ocean quota. And the Chesapeake Bay commercial fishery landed 2.4 million pounds out of the 3 million pound Chesapeake Bay commercial quota. So the ocean commercial fishery regularly underutilizes its total quota. So some quota is unused because striped bass are not always available in some state waters, particularly in North Carolina, which holds 13% of the ocean quota, but has had zero ocean commercial harvest since 2012. And second, some quota is unused because some states prohibit commercial harvest of striped bass. And those states that prohibit commercial harvest collectively hold about 10% of the ocean commercial quota. And then for states that do have active commercial fisheries, there are several factors that impact how much quota is landed each year, including year class availability, overall stock abundance, nearshore avail availability, fishing effort, and state management programs. So this table here shows what percent of the quota was landed by each state for the past three years. So the states, again, marked with asterisks, Maine, New Hampshire, Connecticut, and New Jersey, are those states that prohibit the commercial harvest of striped bass. So they use 0% of their quota each year. And then the other states have active commercial fisheries that used most of their quota in 2021, with many states landing over 90% of their quota in 2021. The exception here, again, is North Carolina, which has had zero ocean commercial harvest for the past nine years. So looking across all states in 2021, in the bottom row of the table, you can see that about 76% of the total ocean quota was used in 2021. So this figure shows how much of the total ocean quota was used over the past 10 years. So you can see the total ocean commercial landings, which are the blue bars, have been below the total ocean quota amount, which is the red line. So for the past 10 years, between 51 and 76% of the total ocean quota has been landed each year. There is concern that allowing commercial quota transfers could potentially increase how much of the ocean quota is used, and this could uh, potentially undermine the goals and objectives of the reductions taken under Addendum 6 in 2020. Again, the commercial ocean fishery consistently underutilizes the total quota due to a combination of fish availability and some states prohibiting commercial harvest. And the Addendum 6 reductions assumed that the commercial fishery would continue to underutilize its quota as it has in the past which would then achieve the addendum six reductions. And this assumption may be violated if quota transfers are permitted in the ocean region and if more quota is used. So the next section outlines the proposed management options for draft addendum one. The proposed options in draft addendum one consider allowing for the voluntary transfer of striped bass commercial quota in the ocean region between states that have ocean quota. The options do not address Chesapeake Bay quota, and the options do not consider transfers between the Chesapeake Bay and the ocean, or vice versa. 
commercial quota that has been reallocated to a state's recreational fishery, like a recreational bonus program, is not eligible to be used for quota transfers. And if quota transfers are permitted, quota would be transferred pound for pound between states. And there would be some uncertainty associated with transfers between states that harvest different size striped bass. And states catch different size fish due to multiple factors, including variability in striped bass size along the coast and different commercial size limits, gears, and seasons. And additionally, through conservation equivalency, states have adjusted their commercial size limits from the historical size standard. And this has resulted in changes to some state quotas over time. So a pound of striped bass commercial quota is not equal across all states. And some of the proposed options do incorporate a provision to address this discrepancy. So moving into the specific options, option A is the status quo in which transfers are not permitted. The alternative options would allow voluntary transfers of ocean commercial quota. And the alternatives range from option B, which would be the least restrictive option, through option E, which would be the most restrictive option. And this range of options would allow transfers with certain conditions based on stock status and board discretion. So starting with alternative option B, which is the general transfer pr provision, voluntary transfers would be permitted with no restrictions, but there would be a conservation tax if the stock is overfished. So there is no limit on how much quota can be transferred, but if transfers occur when the stock is overfished, there would be a 5% conservation tax applied to address the issue that a pound of quota is not equal across states. So for example, if state A transfers 10,000 pounds to state B when the stock is overfished, state B would receive 9,500 pounds and the remaining 500 pounds of that transfer is the conservation tax, which is no longer available for harvest that year. Moving on to option C, which would limit transfers based on stock status. Voluntary transfers would be permitted, except no transfers would be allowed when the stock is overfished. So this is similar to the previous option B, that there is no limit on how much quota can be transferred, but no transfers can occur at all when the stock is overfished. And it's important to note that given the current overfished status of the stock, this option would not provide near-term relief to states that are seeking additional quota. Option D is the board discretion option. So the board would decide whether voluntary transfers are permitted and can set certain criteria on those transfers with a built-in conservation tax. So the board would decide by their final meeting of the year whether to allow transfers for the next one to two years based on information on stock status and information on fisheries performance. And if the board decides to allow transfers when the stock is overfished, a 5% conservation tax would apply to address that issue that a pound of quota is not equal across states. So the other aspect of this option D is the board may specify certain criteria for transfers. The board could set a limit on how much total quota could be transferred in a given year. For example, a set poundage or a set percentage that could be transferred that year. Further, the board could set a seasonal limitation on transferability. So for example, the board could say that no more than 50% of the allowed transfer amount may be transferred before July 1st. The board could also determine state eligibility to receive a transfer based on the percentage of that state's quota landed. So for example, the board could say that a state may not request quota until it has landed 90% of its annual quota. And for this option D's timeline, if the board selects this option and approves the addendum in 2023, the board could decide at that time whether to allow transfers for the 2023 fishing year. And then the board would start the regular process of deciding about transfers in advance. So for example, making a decision about 2024 by the fall of 2023. And finally, the last option is option E, 
which would limit transfers based on both stock status and board discretion. So just like the previous option D, the board would decide whether voluntary transfers are permitted and can set criteria for the next one to two years, except transfers would not be permitted at all when the stock is overfished. And again, it's important to note that given the current overfished status of the stock, this option would not provide near-term relief to states that are seeking additional quota. And if transfers are permitted through the alternative options B through E, there is a general process for how voluntary transfers would occur. So transfers require a donor state and a receiving state. Transfers between states may occur upon agreement of two states at any time during the year and up to 45 days after the last day of the calendar year. And the board may specify any number from zero up to 45 days to limit when transfers can occur after the year ends. The administrative commissioner of the states must submit a signed letter to the commission about the transfer, and a transfer becomes final when states receive written confirmation letters from commission staff. And these transfers do not permanently affect state quota shares, and once quota has been transferred to a state, the state receiving the quota becomes responsible for any overages of that quota. And the final section of the draft addendum is the compliance section. So any measures approved by the board through this addendum would be effective immediately on the date of approval. And if commercial quota transfers are permitted, states must account for any additional quota received through transfers when determining the number of commercial tags required for the upcoming commercial season. So the following slides will provide information on how to submit public comment on Draft Addendum 1. Draft Addendum 1 is posted online on the ASMFC public input webpage with the link shown here on the screen. And one way to provide public comments is at a public hearing. And there are eight public hearings scheduled for December 2022 and January 2023. Five of those hearings are virtual webinar hearings, one hearing is in-person only, and two hearings are a hybrid format. So this slide lists the first four hearings, and this slide lists the following four hearings. And for more information on attending a public hearing and how to register, you can visit the online ASMFC calendar or you can contact Emily Franca, myself, uh, the FMP coordinator at efranca at asmfc.org. And you can submit written comments until 11.59 p.m. on January 13th, 2023. And you can submit written comments via email by sending them to comments at asmfc.org using the subject line, Stripe Bass Draft Addendum 1, or you can send written comments via mail to the address listed on the slide. And all this information is listed on the ASMFC website and listed in the draft addendum one document itself. 